Good morning, everybody here today. And very, very warm welcome to the 1st of December launch event of the Perform Europe Open Core. I am Ausa Rikkastotter, Secretary General of IETM and Chair of Perform Europe, and I will be your host today. For the next hour, the team and the partners of Perform Europe will inform you about the new Open Core, its criteria and requirements, the different tools we have created to assist the Perform Europe partnership process, the several info sessions and help desk sessions ahead, as well as share with you our own thoughts on the importance of this European funding scheme for the performing arts. And on that note, we want to state that it has been very meaningful and a learning experience to develop Perform Europe with our funder, the European Union, through its progressive program, Creative Europe. And on that note, we are thrilled to welcome our opening speaker of today, Pia Arinkilde Hansen, the Director General for Education, Youth, Sport and Culture. Pia, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, dear Perform Europe Chair, uh, Mrs. Osa Rikatsdottir, dear consortium partners, dear colleagues, thank you for this uh, invitation. It's really a pleasure to meet all of you as we celebrate the success of Perform Europe. The performing arts sector suffered a lot over the last three years with the pandemic, with the energy crisis, with inflation. In 2020 alone, the performing arts sector saw overall losses of revenue going beyond 70%. And these challenges added to more structural difficulties like market and sector fragmentation, linguistic barriers or travel costs. And yet in, in the midst of these obstacles, this community came together supported by Creative Europe. And when Europeans needed performing arts the most, when they needed connection uh, and catharsis, you made sure that confinement was not an insurmountable obstacle. And this brings me to my first message. The work of Perform Europe underlines the strength, resilience and dedication of the performing arts sectors. It is this community we are supporting and celebrating today. A community that takes pride in being inclusive and diverse. A community that for a long time has put care into making sure everyone feels their emotions and expresses themselves. A community that leverages this emotional intelligence and persistently contributes to do good for example, contributing to mitigate the damage of climate change, preserving our planet. Your work has our full support, most notably through Creative Europe funding, because these challenges are not in the past tense. COVID may have accelerated the digital transition in this sector, but it also brought up issues regarding skills, rights and revenue distribution. It is to tackle these challenges, to make sure the sector finds its own solutions that we put forward 2.1 million euro for the current Perform Europe calls open until March next year. And we will support 35 projects with up to 60,000 euro and 5% of the total funding will be dedicated to collaborative projects involving Ukrainian partners or supporting initiatives in the Ukrainian performing arts sector. And these projects will explore innovative models for performance to continue to enrich our lives, be it through rethinking the way we create, distribute or enjoy art. The commission may put forward the means, but you are at the steering wheel and you will already have the benefit of knowledge created by the 19 projects that we financed during the pilot phase 
of this initiative. Let me conclude by congratulating the Perform Europe Consortium, International Network for Contemporary Performing Arts, Europe Dance House Network, European Network for Contemporary Circus and Outdoor Arts, European Festivals Association, and the Pearl Live Performance Europe. You contribute to Creative Europe, to the European Theatre Initiative, and to the performing arts sector has been invaluable. And I look forward to seeing the fruits of your collaborative work, and I hope to see this action grow towards new synergies, for example, with Culture Moves Europe, or with the new culture and creativity, knowledge and innovation community of the European Institute of Innovation and Technology. And I cannot wait to hear the stories and inspiring projects that you will bring forward. I wish you a lot of success in your applications. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pia, for your kind and encouraging words. We will certainly keep them with us on the journey ahead. And speaking of, of journeys, Perform Europe is now beginning its journey from being an 18-month pilot to being a long-term standalone funding scheme, offering cascading grants to the performing arts. The learnings and successes of the pilot are many, and we encourage you to study the resources on the Perform Europe website. It was successful because its priorities align completely with the priorities of Europe, the European Green Deal, our strong intentions for an inclusive European society, our determination to offer just and democratic communities. These priorities find manifestations in so many different ways in the arts. And the Perform Europe pilot, the 88 partners which formed the 19 partnerships selected, showed very innovative ways to tour and present 45 artistic works 250 times across more than 90 locations. They did so by offering inclusion of our European rural areas, bridging gaps between audiences and artists with disabilities, promoting queer, feminist, decolonial, migrant, human-centered, artist-led ecological initiatives. They practiced slow travel and replaced carbon-intensive practices with green solutions. Let's hear the voices of a few of them. Perform Europe as a new, totally new source of uh, financing is giving us a chance to bring dance to many different cities out of Prague, not only to the capital city. To bring it also in the villages where normally you don't have uh, infrastructure to present contemporary dance. Perform Europe was really something so accessible, so easy to apply. I mean, we, it was a process which I think was brilliant that we really gave the feedback, what do we need? What is it that we think is, is possible or is necessary? Well, for us, uh, especially Project Woods, was touring four different cities in the Czech Republic, starting in Brno, going to Ostrava, Pilsen and Prague. And we were able to do 12 different body installations in squares and other parts of the cities with this concept of uh, planting the trees from bodies, from legs, and the people were absolutely impressed. They were so happy to see something so specific and uh, they were also surprised that they were not only women but also men participating in it. And uh, for us it was also important that half of these performances were completed by Ukrainian dancers and for them it was a totally new experience. 
and the way that we could embrace each other i think was the most uh, memorable moment for me as well as the things that happen in between the processes and that's what i kind of take back for you know all the breakdowns tears laughter joys and the stories that came out from the participants of the project in a very short time uh very personal experiences that i would think like twice probably sharing it with strangers but this kind of workshops and interventions kind of brought that space a very collective safe space we will hear from the perform europe partners the representatives of the network organizations which have put their minds together to develop perform europe and i'm proud to give the floor first to katrin deventer vice chair of perform europe and secretary general of the european festival association good morning everyone i'm very happy also to bridge this little time and i'm very happy to see you all here <clears throat> and introduce ifa to you the european festivals association platform of arts festivals reaching out obviously to festivals through membership but also various projects uh, such as the european festival fund for emerging artists with the main task to bring festivals in contact with each other across borders we enjoyed and we enjoy still very much joining forces with colleague networks as well as with the european commission to set up perform europe and to continue developing this platform for supporting performing arts practices in a meaningful way but also to engage into a conversation around topics as you mentioned also that concern the sector Perform Europe for me has always been that and for that very unique it's not only an incentive for collaboration through a fund but it's also an invitation for collective thinking and for reflections within the sector and connecting those reflections back to the policy making levels we hope not only with today's call but in the next weeks and months to be in touch with many festivals and presenting contexts and of course artists and producing companies as, as well and to see them back in perform europe and in the projects in the next years now over to you Anita Anita de Bar the new kid of the networks block in the Perform Europe consortium director of Pearl Hello can yes <laughs> that's wonderful Hello everyone a very good good morning to you all imagine i can present myself as a newcomer my name is anita de Barre. i represent pro live performance europe and i hope you are a newcomer just like i am so this is a very exciting and vibrant time that we are having and sharing I really sense this over the Zoom uh, the wires that are crossing Europe. Now, getting serious now. Why did we join and uh, decided to join Perform Europe? It is because our members from across Europe, when they saw the first project, they were so excited. They, whether they were from the creation side or the presenter side, they said, yes, this is what we are waiting for. A European fund supporting mobility, supporting cross-border culture cooperation. And indeed, cooperation, it is in the genes, it's in the fundament of Europe. It's the ex real expression of culture diversity, which is valued so highly in Europe. So we're very pleased to be part of that, and I hope you share my excitement as well. Now, making it possible to work together across borders and art disciplines in the performing arts with a focus on the one hand on sustainability or on inclusion and or allows to create really added value to initiatives that grow with you in your organizations, in your creative process at the local level. But then it has the 
potential to be brought to a wider audience. So this is just fantastic. Now, for all those reasons, Perform Europe is really the excellent opportunity for any one of you who is seeking to enhance its experience and to broaden its network. So again, we are very excited to take part in this journey and to contribute with the expertise and know-how that we have on mobility questions. If you have anything, just meet us and we are there to help you. But to contribute in that sense to the totality of the Perform Europe project. So we are looking forward to give an opportunity to the great diversity of the performing arts that are also represented by our member federations and give new opportunities and chances to highlight projects which fit within the aims of Perform Europe with the focus on sustainability and inclusion. So I'm happy to hand over to Juris Janssens of Idea Consult and over to you, Juris. Thank you very much, Anita. And hello, everybody. Good morning. Uh, very pleased to be here. Indeed, Idea Consult is the research partner in Perform Europe. During the first pilot, we carried out mapping research in this research, but also in the whole pilot. We saw that in the performing arts sector, there is a, a huge need and a big desire to develop and to innovate more sustainable practices with regards to ecological sustainability, with regards to uh, a more inclusive approach towards touring and international presentation. And to boost this uh, need and desire to innovate, uh, Perform Europe will provide a much needed space for setting up experiments, for trying out new approaches with regards to ecological sustainability, the fight against climate change, and also to foster diversity and inclusion. We will allow for the space to set up experiments, but also to learn from these experiments, to document them, to share them, to share the lessons learned with the selected partnerships and also with the broader performing arts ecosystem. And that is why we have set up Perform Europe as a collective space for learning and development, for all the beneficiaries that will take our part in the journey, for all the performing arts sector, we will, uh, they will be able to learn also from what has been learned in these experiments, which will eventually also feed into further policy development. And indeed the role of IDEA Consult right now in this edition of Perform Europe is to facilitate this collective learning and development trajectory. Now I give the floor to Eva Broberg. Uh, she is the network manager of EDM, European Dance Development Network. Well, it's good. Okay. All right. Um, hello, everyone. <clears throat> this is how it is to have a home office um, with sick kids. And um, thank you, Joris, for the introduction. My name is Eva Broberg, and I'm the European Dance Development Network's uh, Network Manager. The vision is to do advocacy and research competence building and cooperation and collaboration for and with professionals in the European dance sector. One of the specificities of contemporary dance is its need for mobility. It collaborates and moves beyond national borders, pushing the settings of its aesthetics, production process, and how to engage with its audience. Idian is very proud to be a partner of Perform Europe to have had the opportunity to create and develop a platform for professionals to connect outside existing connections and networks, and to give support for professionals to connect outside existing, uh, uh, <clears throat> sorry, and to give support where artistic ideas can grow within these connections. Perform Europe provides a funding scheme supporting innovative thinking outside the box for performing arts work. These works can be sprouts of long-term sustainable co-production thinking, or they could be bring a new narrative about what a good life can be in times of climate crisis, or inspire others when emphasizing diversity in a work, its production process, or how it meets its audience. We're looking forward to see many new performing arts work come alive and move 
soon. Thank you. And now I would like to give the screen to Stefan Segreto Aguilar, Network Coordinator of Circus Strada, bringing in the contemporary circus and outdoor arts. Thanks, Eva. Hi, everyone. Um, much has been said already by my dear colleagues, but I would still like the chance to share with you two extra reasons on why Perform Europe is an extremely important funding scheme and on why I'm very excited about this new journey. First and foremost, when talking about inclusion, diversity, and the fight against climate change, I believe that together we can act, that we can make a change, that we can show that a change is possible, and that we can have a stronger impact if we is the stage, whether it is physical or digital, and our tools are our voices, our minds, and our bodies. So let's do this. Let's cooperate. Let's work together. Let's create these stories that will inspire, question, provoke, and entertain. Let's engage with audiences differently and with different audiences. Let's contribute to pave the way for a society where freedom of expression is really valued, where well being is properly put into practice where social exclusion and discrimination are reversed and where we promote social justice and equality between genders. We can do all this also thanks to Perform Europe. The importance of this funding scheme resonates with me also for another reason. Apologies for preaching a little bit for my choir, but I'm excited to see how rich and diverse stories the contemporary circus and outdoor arts can bring from Europe values and priorities. I am really looking forward to this, next to, of course, discovering partnerships and artistic projects, focusing more on theater, dance, performance, and puppetry. Thank you for listening. That's all for me. Over to you, Alsa. Thank you, Stefan, and thank you, dear partners. It has been an absolute privilege for IATM to work on Perform Europe with these strong, passionate partners. All of us care strongly and have a responsibility towards the enhancement of Perform Europe. And we see our collaboration in Perform Europe as a testament of, of how the sector itself can take charge of its own destiny in shaping future funding schemes. And I am now going to hope that we will be able to bring you the voices of the Perform Europe Pilot partner artists and presenters. I think if EU acknowledges the experiences of the marginalized communities, it would be helpful to build a much more cohesive and inclusive society. That's how I feel like this project is important in bringing forward the resistant voices that are still present in Europe in different locations, in different forms. Perform Europe was like a gigantic democratic mobility funds <laughs> scheme that then showed the potential of how we can reach all these places that we are reaching that would not be reached, but also bring the artists to the whole of Europe. This experience was life-changing for me in terms of professionally. In the UK, my work and that way of working and finding spaces to have slow work, which is, you know, in a residency format, that is not outcome-based, that is migrant-led, that is diversity-led. It's been a hard sell for, for a number of years, for a number of reasons. Um, and that's not to say that there's a lot of people that are very supportive of this kind of work. So having a international funder who is up for exploration and testing has been an incredible game-changer. This brings me to the most important part of this 
one hour webinar, which is what you've all been waiting for, the new core of Perform Europe. And I will on that note very happily give the floor to Karen Thelinden, the project coordinator of Perform Europe. Good morning, everyone. I'm really happy to know that so many of you have registered and are here with us uh, today, tuning in from many different places for this official launch. I will now share with you, as Aza said, the most important information about the open call. I will talk about the call's priorities, the different eligibility criteria. I will tell you all about the matchmaking tool that we have developed. And of course, I will at the end also share the timeline with you. But let's start with the basics. The open call of Perform Europe is now officially launched and will be open for four months until the 31st of March, 2024. In total, there is a budget of 2.1 million euro available that will be granted to at least 35 successful partnership projects. Perform Europe is a program for the entire performing arts community. With this open call, we want to make change. And therefore, we are looking for new ideas and for proposals which will have a long lasting impact on the performing arts sector. We invite partnerships to come up with innovative proposals and courageous ideas to change the way in which we tour and present performing arts across borders and to make it greener, more diverse and more inclusive. This translates in the two priorities in focus of our open call. The first one being diversity and inclusion and the second one being the fight against climate change. Partnerships who apply will choose one or both of these priorities as a focus for their proposal. And then with the ambition to move towards a fairer sector, we particularly welcome projects by or involving the areas and communities which are currently underrepresented in the performing arts mobility flows. These include, but are not limited to, members of the LGBTQIA community, people based in rural areas, having underrepresented gender, racial, or ethnic backgrounds, people with disabilities, and other people that identify as members of an underrepresented group within the performing arts landscape. We acknowledge that Perform Europe operates in a highly diverse and unequal context in 40 different countries. Also, Perform Europe's uh, pilot research has revealed several disparities between countries and communities which are part of Creative Europe. And we want to tell you that Perform Europe aims to move, to move towards rectifying these disparities. Then a selection criteria, next to the quality of the proposal in addressing one or both of the mentioned priorities, all Perform Your proposals should implement the following cross-cutting criteria. All proposals should aim for quality and innovation, and all partnerships and proposals should be built on fair principles. This is essential to Perform Europe. 2.1 million euro will be awarded to at least 35 partnerships. Grants will be divided in three categories, 12,000, 32,000 and 62,000 euro, sorry, 60,000 euro, with the 60,000 being the maximum grant available for each selected partnership. Applicants will choose the grant amount they apply for. It is up to them to decide in relation to the project that they envision. We will incorporate specific support to the Ukrainian performing arts community, as 5% of the total funding will be dedicated towards partnerships with Ukrainian partners or initiatives that support the Ukrainian performing arts sector. And then important to note is that Perform, Perform Europe does not cover production costs for new creations. So it means that proposals will need to include a finished artistic work, a finished artistic production or an artistic concept, which is ready to tour and can be presented across borders. Then on eligibility. The call is open to performing arts professionals and organizations legally based in one of the 40 Creative Europe countries. A partnership consists of a minimum of three partners from three Creative Europe countries. 
And in their proposal, they will need to be presenting a minimum of one performing arts work, also in three different Creative Europe countries. Professionals and organizations based in the UK are unfortunately no longer eligible for Perform Europe. All performing arts disciplines are eligible under the call, excluding live music performances, because we work complementary to the Music Moves Europe initiative. Now, this is something that I'm quite excited um, to present to you. It has been developed uniquely for Perform Europe. On our website, applicants will have the opportunity to participate in our matchmaking. So potential applicants will be able to create a profile with all their relevant information. And once they have their own profile, they can use tags and filters to look for other partners. They can send each other match requests and upon a successful match, their contact information will be unlocked for each other and they can connect and start building a partnership. We believe that this matchmaking tool will be highly beneficial in making sure that partnerships are created beyond the usual suspects for collaboration and that it will foster the diversity in the partnerships. Our new website was launched on the 1st of November, you might have already seen. And from today onwards, it is also possible to create your own profile, profile and participate in the matchmaking. This is an example of what a profile page will look like. You will have a photo, a title, of course, a description of what you do. Um, you will also be able to list what you can offer to perform your partnership and what you need from it or what you're looking for. You can indicate the topics you're working on and so on. And as you see here, the main contact information is still blurred because there hasn't been a successful match yet. And this is what your matchmaking tool will look like where you can search for other partners. Maybe it's a bit small, but in that black bar, you will be able to indicate certain tags, uh, certain filters for searching. Um, you can see who you have marked as favorites. You can see the match you have sent, uh, matches you have sent and the matches you have received. Then the toolkit. This is another tool that has been specifically created for Perform Europe. It was developed by IDEA Consult to help applicants in setting up meaningful partnerships and creating, creating an impactful proposal. I will not say too much about it uh, as Joris will present the toolkit to us later. Now, how to apply? It all happens on our website. If you want to apply, make sure to read the open calling guidelines in detail, register with an account, maybe use a matchmaking tool to find partners, set up your partnership, plan your proposal, of course, apply in our digital application form where you also upload your budget form and submit before the deadline on the 31st of March of next year. Then as Perform Europe is also more than a funding scheme for selected partnerships, we will be collecting the learnings of the selected projects throughout their implementation to contribute to further reflections on the transition of the performing arts sector we will share all these learnings with the broader performing arts community and policy stakeholders at all times relevant. And as promised at the end, here's the timeline. From today on, the call is open for four months. Once the call is closed, independent evaluators will assess and select the projects. And by the 3rd of June, we will, announce, we will be able to announce the selection. Then from the 1st of July 2024 until the 30th of November 2025, the partnerships will have 17 months to implement their proposal. Now, I mentioned the toolkit briefly before, uh, so I would like to invite Joris Janssens from IDEA Consult to tell us all about it. Okay, thank you very much, Karen. I will share my screen to present uh, Perform Europe Toolkit. Uh, to explain to you what it is and what it is about. Indeed, it is um, a PDF, a canvas, that you will be able to find uh, online. And uh, indeed, it is a tool that is developed to help you develop uh, proposals that are really aligned with the aims and objectives of Perform Europe, which you know all about right now. It's a toolkit that is set up to really spark a conversation within potential partnerships to help uh, to uh, share and exchange artistic ideas, to identify common goals and challenges, and uh, well, to develop strong projects that are really in line with the aims and objectives of Perform Europe. 
who is it for? Indeed, it is for everybody uh, who is uh, has an interest in uh, develop uh, developing uh, proposals. You can uh, have different situations there. There can be a situation where you already have a partnership. You already have a project idea. And in that situation, the toolkit can help you to really refine, articulate, align your proposal with uh, from Europe objectives to really explain what you want to do and why this is important. It can also be another situation where you already have a partnership in mind. You already have some partners around the table, but not yet a specific project idea. And also in this situation, the toolkit can help you to explore what do we want to achieve together? What are the challenges we will face? And this will help you to develop a strong proposal. A third situation is also possible where you sit around a table. You don't know with these partners that you will develop a partnership, but the toolkit will help you to explore, to see whether you have a good partnership with a similar interests, similar ambitions with regards to a proposal for Perform Europe. So it's usable. Uh, in different situations, uh, and you can also use it both in an online setting, um, uh, in Zoom, Teams, or other environments, but you can also download and print the toolkit to use it in a physical setting in uh, live meetings. That's all possible. So it's a conversation starter, but what will the conversation be about? Uh, Perform your toolkit is a canvas with four levels. And uh, you, when you go through the levels, you have different uh, topics to explore. First, you will talk about uh, what are the ar artistic ideas that we want to further explore uh, in a Perform Europe project proposal, put them on the table, exchange about it, get to know each other. Second, there is uh, room to explore common ground with regards to what is really the change we want to make with regards to the Perform Europe priorities climate change, diversity, inclusion. What do we really want to achieve? What's the impact we want to have on our practice, on the performing arts sector, and exchange about that and find the common grounds. Third level is uh, indeed, if you want to do that, it's quite complicated and you will certainly meet some challenges individually, but also as a partnership. What are the challenges we think we will face? Uh, uh, resources are uh, always limited. So, what do we? With, what are the challenges that we think we will face when trying to achieve this aim? And the last level is uh, it will help you to design and perform your proposal, to uh, explain to each other, and to design a number of activities, and also explain how these activities will contribute to the aims that you want to achieve together, the change that you want to bring about with your uh, perform your a project and proposal. So this is what the toolkit will do. And it's part of a bigger plan, as we already indicated, uh, Perform Europe is not about funding the status quo. It uh, starts from the belief that artistic projects and sharp artistic ideas can help to innovate with regards to the fight against climate change and to foster inclusion and diversity. And we will learn a lot about it throughout the whole process. Uh, we will encounter uh, a number of challenges, as I already said, but we will also learn a lot about how to uh, overcome these challenges. And we will have uh, a learning and development trajectory where we will uh, uh, exchange about the lessons learned. And in fact, the toolkit is the start of this collective learning trajectory. Now let's have a few more minutes to look at the toolkit itself. What does it look like? As I said, you can download it and find it on the website. And how can you use it? In fact, before you will use it, you will do a number of steps. As Karen said, it's best that you uh, register online, that you make a profile. And there you can already share some of the ideas that you want to further explore. You can use the matchmaking tool to find your partners. And uh, with these partners, it's also important before using the toolkit that you choose one or both of the Perform Your Priorities. It's important that you do that before using the toolkits. If you've done that, you're ready to sit around the table, you schedule a meeting, and then before you start, it's also good that you assign a number of roles. Everybody can contribute to the discussion, of course, but it's good to have a moderator that helps you to come to conclusions. It's good to have a reporter who takes notes in the interactive PDF or uh, just on paper. 
It's also good to have a timekeeper who keeps track of time and guides you through the exercise. And then you go through the exercise. This is what one of the screens in our canvas look like. First level, as I said, it's really to get to know each other, explore your artistic interests. And this is a screen where you will explain to each other, well, who am I, where am I based? You will pick a color, uh, a perform Europe color, that you will use through the different exercises and you will explain who you are and where you are based. And it might look like this in a fictitious example. Also in this first level, indeed, you will explore artistic interests and you are asked, everybody is asked to come up with two ideas, artistic ideas, other ideas, any ideas that you really want to explore further in Perform Europe. And we will ask you to put them on a gliding scale to the left, if it's the topic that you are really very much experienced in and you bring this experience to the table. To the right, if you have less experience but are very much interested to learn, to explore these topics further. And if you put them on the table on the color that you have chosen, you will get an image like this and you will have a number of ideas put on the table that will spark your conversation and maybe already have some building blocks for a common artistic vision. We will ask you then to moderator will do that uh, to come to a conclusion and to really uh, identify what are the shared ideas that we want to further explore in a potential proposal for Perform Europe. So this is level one, explore your artistic interests. And it's gonna look like that when it's filled in. And then indeed you are ready to uh, find a common ground first with regards to really what's the change that we want to bring about with regards to our practice, with regards to uh, the practice in the performing arts. And this is a screen where we will collect your individual ideas, bring them together, cluster them and uh, talk with each other, uh, exchange what is the change that you want to bring about individually. And if you fill in the exercise, you will find a number of major topics, focus areas, focus points that you really want to work on. And uh, you will collect everybody's uh, views, ideas, and ambitions with regards to these uh, topics. And then indeed, you will come to a conclusion once more. Can you really find a common ground? What will we try to explore? What is the change we want to make with our potential partnership? Your moderator will help you to come to a conclusion and your reporter will uh, write it down. And it could look like this when it is filled in. Um, let's advance and see. This is indeed the end of each level. We'll come to a point where you will ask yourself, and your potential partnership. Are we ready to continue? Did we find a common ground? If you didn't find a common ground, if you're quite sure that this is not your partnership, you will stop here and maybe you will go back to the uh, matchmaking tool, find other partners, um, and you will get around the table in a different setting. If you think, okay, maybe we will be able to develop a proposal, but we need to find some things out, then you can maybe stop and schedule a new meeting, find, have some time for reflection. But if you think, yes, indeed, we have found this common ground, then you can advance to the next level of the Perform Europe Toolkit. And indeed, these are the kinds of exercises that you will find in the Perform Europe Toolkit. In level three, you will talk not only not about the change that you want to make, but the challenges that you will encounter along the way individually, but also within your project. And you will go through the same steps, collect ideas, come to a com uh, common conclusion, and also do the exercise. Are we ready to continue or are there further things that we need to find out before we can continue? And in the last level, indeed, you will design your perform your proposal and you will explain to each other and you will design what is the works that we will put on tour that we will present across borders where will this happen? What are the types of activities will we develop? And importantly, how will these activities really contribute to the change that we want to bring about with regards to, um, uh, for instance, the fight against climate change or diversity and inclusion? It can be, for instance, that we will share resources, invest in research and development, that the uh, activities will help us to innovate with regards to formats and processes, just some examples. 
So indeed, this is the last level. Uh, you design your product, perform your proposal. And if you have a green light there, you can uh, refine it, further elaborate it and apply. This in a nutshell is the Perform Europe Toolkit. Indeed, it's really a conversation starter to help the further development of proposals, artistic, innovative proposals that contribute to the aims of Perform Europe. You'll be able to find it online and you can start using it starting today. Thank you, Joris. Thanks a lot for uh, this very comprehensive um, journey through the toolkit, which we really hope you will all now dig into and make use of for your upcoming applications. We are now coming towards the end of this uh, launch event, but before we say goodbye, we want to share with you information on the networking events coming up, as well as some additional tips about um, things that are available to you in this Perform Europe open call period for the next four months. As I said, there's a lot of different things that are going to be available for you for available to you from today until 31st of March when the call ends. And uh, first up, it's the events. There will be various events in connection to the open call. The goal of the events is to inspire and inform the sector about Perform Europe's guiding values and visions and the importance of the many opportunities that it provides. We will be organizing two specific Perform Europe online sessions open to the entire sector. The first one is in two weeks on Friday, the 15th of December. And the second one is Friday, the 2nd of February, 2024. During both of these sessions, we will be sharing information about the call, answering questions about how to create opportunities for networking. And we will also be assisting potential applicants in the use of the toolkit and the matchmaking platform. So in a way, in the next events, we will sort of dig further into the tools of Perform Europe. The networks who are partners in Perform Europe will also be hosting over 20 targeted info sessions and networking events in the next months to further disseminate the call amongst diverse professional audiences, both online and in person in various cities across Europe. Next to these network events, the Creative Europe desks will be hosting information sessions often in local languages. And on that note, you should all know that Creative Europe desks are in place in every single participating country and are available for questions and assistance in relation to Creative Europe program and specifically for our case for Perform Europe. And we are really sincerely thankful for that support. Please check out the events calendar on our website subscribe to the newsletter to stay up to date about events, location, specific focuses, and information on accessibility. On the activities page on our website, we gather not only all the information about the events, but you can also find the section news there, where we will be sharing important updates as we roll out the entire Perform Europe project. Another section under activities on our website is the page resources, where we collect research and documentations about all the topics that are relevant to the Perform Europe priorities. For example, good practices on inclusion, a handbook on greening practices, and so on and so forth. And last but not least, please look at the section stories on our website where we share the inspiring journeys of the projects that were selected in the pilot. And once the next projects will be selected in this call, these stories will also be reflected there. 
And if you still have any questions about the open call, after reading the open call and the guidelines, you can consult the document Frequently Asked Questions on our website. And you can also join our bi-weekly help desk sessions where the Perform Europe team will be able to answer any questions that you might have. They will be online on Zoom every Tuesday morning from 10 to 11 Central European time. And you find the link to register on our website. We are now coming towards the end of the official launch event of Perform Europe. As a closing word, I want to thank all the speakers for their contributions. Howl Round that has kindly assisted us in the live streaming of the event. The International Sign Language Interpreters and Live Text Captioner for improving the accessibility of the event. And last but not least, all of you for your attendance and attention. We really hope we have brought across to you the enthusiasm we have for this open call. And we warmly invite you to spread the word. Again, subscribe to our newsletter and social medias like and share and check out our new website and register and create profile on the website. And of course, become part of the Perform Europe journey and reimagine international touring with us. Thank you so much for being with us today and stay tuned.